The 21st President of the United States, Chester A. Arthur, was born on October 5, 1829, in Fairfield, Vermont. His family consisted of his father, William Arthur, a Baptist preacher, mother, Malvina Stone Arthur, and six siblings. His wife, Ellen Nell Lewis Herndon, who died of pneumonia before his presidency, bore him two children named Chester Allen Arthur Jr. and Ellen Nell Herndon Arthur. Growing up, he attended academy in New York before graduating from Union College in 1845 with a degree in law. He became affiliated with the Republican Party in 1856, served in the New York militia from 1858 to 1862, and was promoted to quartermaster general in charge of inspecting troops and providing equipment. From 1871 to 1878, Arthur was the collector of the Port of New York until a few years later when he was elected vice president in 1881 under President Garfield. The assassination of Garfield by assailant Charles J. Guteau opened the door for Chester A. Arthur to be sworn in as president where he served from 1881 to 1884. The specifics of this presentation will focus on how Chester A. Arthur, known as the Gentleman Boss, did not support the Chinese Exclusion Act, passed the Pendleton Act of 1882, and single-handedly changed the White House decor to a state that has carried forward to today. The Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 excluded Chinese people from coming to the United States. It originally was supposed to be for a period of 10 years, but was extended in 1892 and became a permanent fixture in our country's legislation in 1902. It was not supported by the Arthur cabinet and previously as a bill was vetoed by the president. The decision to veto the bill set off a backlash of disgust from both sides of the United States. In the West Coast, white laborers felt that the Chinese were taking their jobs for less pay, thus bringing wages down. Moreover, in the East Coast, there was less violence, but many were just as equally appalled by Arthur's decision. Chicago Mayor Carter Harrison and Tammany boss John Kelly of New York protested the veto. Those protests quickly led to crowds of people hanging in the effigy of Arthur being burned at the stake. Obviously, the fact that Arthur was once an abolitionist lawyer and a very mild-tempered person could give him just cause for his lack of support. Chester A. Arthur understood that this type of legislation was detrimental in the long run for economic reasons, and being the kind gentleman boss he was known for probably is the reason why the act was eventually passed by Congress without his blessing. The Chinese minister, Shang Xiaozhu, who was a beacon of conscience to Arthur, thought the bill was unjust and discriminatory and was very much against the passing of it. The Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 hurt American and Chinese relations for the next 60 years. It was not until the United States and China became World War II allies that the law was repealed in 1943. The Pendleton Act of 1883 was inspired by the assassination of Garfield. It created a modern civil service system that is widely known to be one of Arthur's accomplishments as president. The act established a three-person, bipartisan panel that worked together to develop exams to be used as a screening agent for federal employee new hires. A safe summary of the law called for competitive exams for all jobs classified as civil service. Arthur, the dapper man that he was, surprised his critics by becoming a supporter vocally in regards to reform. He went as far as appointing individuals, long affiliated with the reform movement, to the position of commissioners. Mr. George William Curtis, Civil Service Reform League associate, was inspired by the move and commended Arthur with his speech before the Reform League in 1883. Because of the Pendleton Act, the United States Civil Service Commission was created, dissolving the so-called spoils system and facilitating the merit system for federal government employees. It was rumored in Washington that one of the first things Arthur said when he took office was, I will not live in that house. With all certainty, his three-month deferment from moving in had probable cause since he did give Miss Garfield time to move out. However, the time was also used to do some emergency decorating under the control of the proxy first lady and younger sister of Arthur, Mary McElroy. She led the White House into an engulfing fury of renovation, never before seen since its rebuilding after being destroyed by the British in 1812. 
The remodeling consisted and reflected the opulence and panache of Arthur's New York homes. Aside from the vigorous remodeling, Arthur hired a French chef from New York to create state dinners suitable for elaborate occasions. Prior to Arthur's term as president, the White House interior was plain and unfit for the type of company he was used to hosting. Yet after the White House was decorated so expeditiously, it became a social destination in a capital not known for social destinations. The president continued throughout his entire term to upgrade the look of the White House as patrons of his extraordinary extravaganzas enjoyed his hospitality. Maybe this is where he got his nickname, The Gentleman Boss. Nevertheless, Arthur's attention to decor and the remodeling of the White House has created a sense of classiness that is still evident today. Furthermore, Chester A. Arthur appeared to be a socially conscious person. His actions with regards to the Chinese Exclusion Act proved that he was a rational thinker and he somewhat understood that relations with Chinese people were important to the United States. Also, by passing the Pendleton Act, he allowed the government to create a system for screening prospective federal civil workers. The tactics used by the United States Civil Service Commission then are used now and are primarily responsible for the strength of our nation's infrastructure. Moreover, his polite demeanor and candid widower's status easily can be attributed to his aristocratic tastes. Not only did he revamp the entire interior of the White House, but his loyalty to his deceased wife is reflected to this day by a memorial of her at St. John's Episcopal Church. Chester A. Arthur was diagnosed with Blight's disease in 1883, and by the end of his term, his health had diminished rapidly. Arthur never received the nomination of his party in 1884. He completed his term as president, and soon after leaving the White House, died on November 18, 1886. His legacy in the White House can be thought of as one that has brought a certain prestige and class that has stamped the office of the presidency of the United States of America permanently. <laughs>